first degree murder, first degree murder, and accessory after the fact of first degree murder. Count one, conspiracy to commit first degree murder. To prove that crime, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, the intent of Denise Williams was that the offense of first degree murder would be committed. And two, in order to carry out the intent, Denise Williams agreed, conspired, combined, and confederated with another person, Brian Winchester, to cause first-degree murder to be committed either by them or one of them or by some other person. It is not necessary that the agreement, conspiracy, combination, or confederation to commit first-degree murder be expressed in any particular words or that words pass between the, co between the conspirators. It is not necessary that the defendant do any act in furtherance of the offense conspired. First degree murder will be fully defined for you below under count two, and I'm not going to repeat it twice. It is a defense to the charge a criminal conspiracy that Denise Williams, after conspiring with one or more persons to commit a murder, persuaded Brian Winchester not to do so or otherwise prevented commission of the murder under circumstances indicating a complete and voluntary renunciation of her criminal purpose. Renunciation is not complete and voluntary where the crime that was conspired to was not completed because of unanticipated difficulties, unexpected resistance, a decision to postpone the crime to another time, or circumstances known by the defendant that increase the probability of being apprehended. If you find that the defendant proved by a preponderance of the evidence that she persuaded Brian Winchester not to commit the murder or otherwise prevented the commission of the murder, Once again, I know I previously thank you for being potential jurors and the fact that you are in fact jurors. And now I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you. Again, for doing exactly what it is that we knew you would do. You were selected because myself um, and other counsel uh, felt that you were the best that there was in order to sit there and listen throughout the course of this trial and pay attention to everything going on in the courtroom. I know I pay attention, I know the judge pays attention, I know they do. And you've done exactly as it is that we thought you would do and you paid attention throughout all the testimony as well as everything else going on in the course of this trial. And thank you very much. Once again, we literally cannot do this without you. You are a vital part of the criminal justice system. That being said, Closing arguments. As the judge says, I get to talk to you twice. I talk to you the first time, and then Mr. Way will come up and speak with you, or Mr. Pavano, um, and I will come back and get to address you one last time. Um, the way I like to structure this a little bit, just to give you a little bit of guideline, is I want to go over the elements of the crime and the jury instructions as the judge just um, read to you, okay? because I've been instructed by the court reporter that I was speaking at 330 words a minute yesterday, which is about 100 over what she's rated for. So I need to try to pace myself a little bit. So if it sounds like I'm slowing down on purpose, I'm trying to help the court reporter out today. 
Mr. Padovano and I and my team thank you for your careful attention to this case. No one thanks you more for your attention to this case than Denise Williams. I'm going to talk to you in my closing argument about five distinct areas. I can't do PowerPoint presentations. I will probably at some point try to put something here and it will be upside down and you won't be able to read it. So I'm going to try to talk to you and I'm going to trust in your memories and in your note taking and in what you've heard over the last three days of evidence, but also what you have not heard over the last three days in evidence. The first thing I want to start with is just to remind you of something you already know, something that you would recognize based on the instructions that Judge Hankinson has provided. This is not, this is not a case about feeling sorry for anyone. This is not a case about trying to get, quote, justice for Mike. This is not a case about concerts. It's not a case about suspicions. It's not a case about guesses. It's not a case about trips. It's not a guess about pictures. It's not a guess about how you feel about Denise Williams. It's not a case about how you feel about Cheryl Williams. <coughs> It's not a case about how people mourn. It is not a case about how people grieve. It is not a case about whether people smile. It is not a case about whether people sit there and stare. This is a murder case. I believe it would be helpful for you to consider the following. When evaluating all of the evidence, or the lack of evidence, that has been produced by the state of Florida in this case, Please try for a moment as an exercise to remove from what you've heard any taint of Brian Winchester. Take the evidence that has been presented to you and take Brian Winchester out of it. If you take Brian Winchester out of the things that have been shown to you, you have nothing. That has been confirmed, ladies and gentlemen, by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement agents. 